Hello, Steve White, Trek Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89, Star Trek Sub-Legend Gatekeeper. Okay, so we all know there's been problems at Eagle Moss. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, it was announced they were going into, or leaked that they were going into administration. Everything shut down, no one's answering the phones, no one's answering the emails. Uh, no one knew if they were going to get any more orders, if they were going to be able to finish their part works, people were working on the Enterprise D or the Ecto-1 and all these other things. It's not just Star Trek, it's like Doctor Who and Stargate and all these other um, brands that have Eagle Moss products being produced, but Star Trek was sort of their biggest, sort of most famous sort of thing they were doing. And the Starship's collection was huge, and there were people who were still waiting on ships, ones they'd been told were going to be done, ones that they've actually paid for or whatever. It's just a huge big mess. No one knew what was happening. Everyone was freaking out. And nothing really happened. We didn't hear anything for a couple of weeks. Uh, and then um, the other day, I noticed there was an interview with a guy called Ben Robinson uh, at Trek Central. Basically, the employees, apparently they're allowed to talk now because um, the employees were not told by senior management what was happening. They had no idea what was happening to the last minute. And um, basically, they were told during a certain period of their administration they couldn't talk to anyone, so just be quiet. So it was quite um, uncomfortable for these people. They had to just sit and be quiet while everyone was like screaming, you know, what's happening, what's happening. Because um, these people, you know, the people who actually work on the products, they care about the products. They're not the money men. They're not the ones up the top. They're not the bankers. They actually care about making the product and whether the people actually buy them and enjoy them. And, you know, so they don't want to see any of these people go without or m have collections of missing parts or unfinished um, projects or anything like that. So it was a fairly long interview, about 26 minutes, and he went through a lot of stuff. Um, they, they had like 400 Starships in the Starship collection. Um, they've gone through all the main ones, and they've gotten down to just um, the sort of one-offs. And they had gotten to the point where they're pretty much just doing everything that was coming out from the new shows. And where they're at now is basically, he, he, he assured us that there are people interested in taking over um, the projects, taking over the Starships collection, taking over the Enterprise, D, part works and all this sort of stuff. But, of course, there's a lot of complicated licensing and finances to go through that. And they also have to sell people on, you know, the profitability of this. Because what he kept saying was, these make money, these make money. He kept saying, you know, it's not an issue of success or these making money. You know, if someone else takes these over, they'll make money, they'll be successful. Which was what I sort of assumed and what I thought, of course, they're going to say anyway. But um, what was interesting was he did go into something... Um, like for example, he said, uh, you know, it's very easy to go on Twitter and say, look, I've got all these, all these people sort of making a lot of noise because they want these products. But when you do the count, there's only about 150 people. So that's not really enough. Um, you've got to try and convince these people that building anything other than like the original enterprise or the enterprise D is actually going to be profitable. And, um, one thing he did say was some of the, um, some of the back end ones, some of the, um, the sorry, background ones, not back in background ships, like the Roman ships from Picard, were not profitable. So a lot of the haters were coming out saying, oh, it collapsed because they just made new Trek toys, or they made new Trek toys, no one wanted them. And I sort of was like, no, people care about the starships either way. They still want the ships, even if they don't like the show, they still want the ships. It looks like some of that was true, that, that he actually literally pointed out Picard and Roman ships and saying that they weren't selling and they would have to think twice about what they were producing. They couldn't just produce everything because not everything was just going to sell. They couldn't just assume everything would sell, which is what they'd been doing. So there may have been a little bit of truth to that in that some of the later things from Enterprise and... Um, not Enterprise, from um, Discovery and Strange New Worlds weren't actually selling. And he was really um, glad that... The Prometheus, no, not the Prometheus, that's from, um, that's from Prometheus. The Protostar and the, um, the Stargazer from, um, season three of Picard hadn't been made yet, two of Picard yet, hadn't been made yet because they felt like they could sell the line on those products. Like, look, we have these sort of big sort of ships that are important to these, um, shows that people really want and we can launch a new series with these. So they're just trying to get people interested and get them to actually take over the lines and finance them. So that's where we're at. They said there are people talking about it, people interested in it, but whether they can actually get them to do it or whether they can get other people to do it in their place is the issue. And he did actually admit, and I was kind of shocked, 
that some of the latest Picard ships actually weren't selling and they couldn't just keep going on producing every ship anymore. They had to actually be selective and make sure they were doing ones that were doing well because, you know, they need to be able to support the line. Um, I think that's it. That's everything. Um, we went through how they had 200 plus ships um, and books. They went into the build, um, stuff like the D and all that. So they had started to spread themselves a little bit thin as well. But um, he was really secure in how successful and popular these things are. And if someone else takes them over, they should be able to continue on. And that's the hope. That's the optimistic sort of assumption. But we'll see what happens. And we'll see what they choose to put out in the future if they do continue producing these lines. So we'll see what happens. I don't really have any of them. I just got the first couple just for the sake of having a couple. And that's it. But there's a few I wouldn't mind getting eventually, but we'll see. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Bye.